Uh, welcome back, guys. We are here for NFC 27. Uh, that's right, NFC 27. We have a very special guest today, The Professor. If you've seen his TikToks and uh, you know you see him on Twitter, he is absolutely hilarious. you got to love it. you got to show that love uh, to our friend here. And we're just going to chat a little bit, get to know him, and, uh, and see what everything's about, see what he's about. So, uh, Professor, uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, what's going on, my man? Yeah, what's up, man? Uh, my real name is Akbar, but then I went by the name The Professor because when I first started making content, I was making content around fitness, so I just thought it was a funny and suiting name. I went with it, but I never decided to change it after I transitioned into NFT gaming. But that transition happened when I found Axie Infinity. I think it's been like a year and a half now, and I've been a gamer since I was younger. I stopped playing because it was an expensive hobby. But with NFT gaming, you know, all of that changed. NFT, NFTs are expensive, but with the whole play to earn, play and earn, things are things aren't things aren't the same anymore. So I knew mm -hmm. if I didn't go all in, I would regret it. So I just started making content, started making connections. And I agree. I agree. I I agree. It's like, that's the thing is, uh, you know, the play and earn, it's like, yeah, gaming can be expensive, like you say, and, and the play and earn kind of softens that blow a little bit, if not, you know, totally reverses it. So I agree. I think it's great. And yeah, you said you, uh, you know, uh, you, you go to the gym and stuff, you know, you're looking a little thick, man. You're looking a little, you know, in shape. So that's <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> I've lost a lot of muscle since I joined the NFT gaming space. I've been glued <laughs> to my chair. I'm, I'm gaining it all here too. Trust me, man. It, it just it just accumulates here. So uh, first yes. thing. First things first, I want to say, you know, I just I finished a 12 hour stream on Friday, so my voice is a little rattled, uh, if you've oh, noticed. So, uh, but uh, we're gonna push through it. So uh, it was a great time. Uh, WT, what's new and exciting with you, my friend? Uh, how you doing? Hello, brother. How you doing? Glad to be back. Been looking forward to this one with the Buffester. I've actually watched your stuff for a very, very long time. When I first got into the NFT space, I was looking around and everything back in uh, January of 2021. And I, I don't know how, but I, I came across yours and I don't know. I just I just I just knew right away. It's like there's something with this guy. I don't know what. And I was just like check it out. And then I, I think it's your open honesty, like your, your very open honesty. And that resonates with me. And like, that's what. It cracks me up, and like like you just said, oh, I lost because I'm sitting in this chair. Yeah, a lot of us have been sitting in these chairs too much, and it's the truth. And I put on yeah. some pounds, and Bruno and I both talk about, man, we got to oh, start yeah. exercising, man. This is, this is bad for our health. So. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're on. Thanks for uh, embellishing our our desires to have you on today. <laughs> thank you for thank you for bringing me on, man. You guys all you guys have some really badass setups. Thank you. <laughs> makes mine makes mine look very boring. I got. <laughs> It's a beautiful wall. It it's a beautiful yeah. wall. I love it. I painted it myself, actually. It looks beautiful. So you said you were in uh, Axie Infinity for a year and a half and stuff. How's that going with everything? So were you in when it was first kind of uh, coming into the scene? Tell us about it. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about it. Uh, I joined when it was like 300,000 daily active users. So it was still expensive, mm -hmm. but like it was literally right before the extreme blow up. So luckily, you know, I came out of it green. Uh, Luckily, I, was, I didn't buy the top, and it was, it was life-changing for me. It was life-changing for me. I built up a massive follower on Twitter. My TikTok's doing well. I mean, I used to make Instagram. I used to make fitness videos on my Instagram, and with that, I'm still going through a rebuilding phase. But, like, yeah, overall, I think I'm much happier. Yeah. I'm in a much better place financially and mentally. Right, Isn't right. It? And that's the thing. If you got in Axie early enough, I like I have friends that made you know lots of money as well. I never got into it early enough, and uh, and I never got into Axie Infinity. But I, yeah, it, it changed people's lives hundred percent. So yeah, so um, you know yeah, tell us about just like when you got into the NFT. So it was that you said it was Axie Infinity that got you in there. Uh, what are your general thoughts about the industry as a whole? Is are we where are we with it? Are we still in like the ground floor? Do you think we've made some you know movements in it, or do we still have a long way to go? uh in this space as a whole i feel like we still have a very very long way to go because i mean there's like what five maybe ten games that are available right now that's nothing that's nothing and you know there are like hundreds if not thousands of games coming out in the tradition even more maybe in the traditional right. space every day and right now we say that there's a lot of games we say that there's a lot of NFT games coming out but like it's really not compared to the amount of games coming out in the traditional gaming space. And at the moment, the entire world seems to be 
hating on NFTs. It's a very controversial topic, and I think it's going to take quite a long time to win them over. I would say maybe you know four or five years. No one can put an exact timeline on it, but I don't yeah. think we're going to see mass adoption for a while. Personally. I I agree, and and there's a few things about the, those points you said that I to, I'm, I'm totally on board with as well. Where you say you know there's just not enough games coming. Like right, yes, there's a lot of games being built right now. I'd say, and I say a lot, and I say that loosely. It's not a lot, but there's a bunch of games being built right now that are going to be released in 2023. Uh, but you're right. I, this reminds me of the old. Scott, like you said, you've been a gamer your whole life. I've been a gamer my whole life, and this reminds me of the old like Nintendo days and stuff where there would only be so many games coming out a year, you know, uh, where now in video games, there's literally, like you said, hundreds of games getting thrown out. It's just, it's, it's oversaturated. There's just games getting thrown all the time. People are beating games in a couple of days and they're waiting for the next one. Cause there's just so much yeah. coming out. We're back in the day, you know, maybe there was a few, few good titles coming out a year and that's it. And I feel like that's where we are right now in NFTs. There's just not yeah. a lot coming at us. And, uh, I completely, completely agree, uh, with, with what you said. And I think we have a long way to go, but I think eventually all these, you know, um, these companies and these these they they're gonna see the bigger picture and I think eventually like I say it could be five years could be longer uh, that 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 it's gonna go that way but we're we're just not there yet we're still in the growing pains there's a lot to learn um, you know like with actually like there's the whole extraction uh, problem they have to figure things out there has to be a happy medium because where I see it right now is that the whales can come in they can literally control the market and a lot of people get stuck on the bag. And a lot of these games, it's like, you know, people go in, they extract and then they leave and they got to figure something yeah. out. There's got to be that happy medium. So I, I completely agree with mm -hmm. what you were saying. Uh, WT, what are your thoughts on that? Exactly. Uh, I, I don't even call them games. I call them startups. We're in Kickstarters, startups, whatever the term is for them. And we're waiting almost all the Games I'm in were waiting, which is fine. I'm cool with that. I signed up for it. I understood the the choice that I made. And yeah, we need more games. And not only just games, we need fun games. I think that's the that's one of the things that there was two things that caught my ear when I got into Guild of Guardians. And the first one was they kept talking about making it fun. And this was before the explo or the explosion and the downfall or, or not downfall, but the quick downturn of uh, Axie Infinity. Back in March of 2021. Derek Lau was talking about fun, making the game fun and making it sustainable. And a, a couple other things he said too, that caught my ear, but the fun part was the one that really caught it for me. And mm -hmm. yeah, we just, we got to get some more games and I, I think it's coming. I think it's coming. It's, I think yeah. a lot of it has to do with everything going on in the world, uh, how fast it's going to come. And I think everybody's just kind of like on pins and needles with everything and like, Bruno and I, we're just we're just gonna keep plowing forward. I'm pretty sure the buff buffessor's doing the same thing, and uh, we'll yeah. we'll get there when we get there. Is how I'm looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and we've said this before, too. It's like, for any game, I think, in this space to succeed, it has to be fun. If people are just going in uh, and it becomes another job, it, it just, that's, that, you know, people aren't going to, you know, it's just like, you know, have you ever played a game where you log in just to do your dailies, and then it's like, you, you first, you love the game, then you're like, well, I still got to log in to do my dailies, and then it's like, oh, I got to log in to do my dailies. It becomes a chore, yeah. and that's, it's like the yeah. cycle, and if, if the NFT game becomes that cycle where it's like, oh, I'm getting in just so I can make those couple bucks, it's already a job. And you and and you gotta get away from that right off the start. So a game like you know Guild of Guardians, I love their mentality where it's like, no, no, we want to make a good game, and everything else comes after. We're making it play, we're making it free to play, so we can get all the people in. We're gonna focus on the game first, not the tokenomics, not all that stuff. It's the game first, and, and I love that. Uh, and that that's that to me is what's important. That's what that's what's gonna separate the successful games to the ones that are people coming in to extract. Uh, speaking of Guild of Guardians, did you get a chance to, uh, to, to play the alpha? And uh, if so, what are your thoughts? I did. I played it. Uh, I, I pretty much know I it. I thought it was very convenient. <laughs> just like when I meet up with my girlfriend, she's usually like 10, 15 minutes late. That's a great time to pull out, <laughs> pull out the app and start playing Guild of Guardians, which is like amazing. Like I, I don't want to like oh, wait for someone for 10 to 15 minutes. I might as well just be earning while waiting for someone yeah. and and it's an enjoyable game like you said guild of guardians is a very fun game like for the alpha it was great it was definitely one of the better alphas mm -hmm. that i've played and that makes me believe that the full game is going to be a lot of fun as well 
hundred percent. I mean, I, I was the same as you. Like, I, I couldn't wait for the, um, you know, my energy to come back. You know, you, you blow through yeah. the energy and then you're like, oh, I need more. It's just like you need that fix. Yeah. Um, which, you know, there's the energy boosters when the game comes out, which is going to be interesting to see how it all plays into it. You know, we're, we're assuming, I think we have an idea, but it's like, we, we haven't played with it yet. So, uh, but that was funny. Like you say, man, yeah, you know, she's like, oh, she's getting ready. All right, man. We got, uh, you know, we got 15 minutes. We got an hour. We could burn through some energy, you know? So, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I thought it was great too, man. I thought it was the greatest, uh, the best alpha I've played. I mean, personally myself, that was the best alpha that I played. Uh, I think it's I think it's better than and I'm gonna say this right now I think it was better I think it was better than actual games uh, that uh, that are out and released so they uh, I'm I'm super excited about it I think they did a phenomenal job um, WT uh, I know WT played it and he felt the same way he actually hit the leaderboard a couple times uh, he was near wow. the top yeah yeah he was uh, he was one of the big boys That's in there GOG tokens yeah I got a little bit it was cool yeah. um, I, I uh, it was the pre alpha. And my expectations was there's was going to be a lot of problems, and there was absolutely none. Granted, they didn't have millions of people on the platform stress testing the servers like crazy, but in general, I think they had close to 8,000 people playing all at once, and I didn't have any bugs, which floored me. I've never seen that happen with a, a pre-alpha before. And the the biggest thing, Bruno and I were like really skeptical about the two-minute dungeons. We were like, what? Two-minute dungeons? You can't do anything in two minutes, you know? <laughs> but, like, I was actually pleasantly surprised and relieved because I actually was on vacation when they dropped the game for pre-alpha. And so being on vacation with my family, I couldn't lock myself in a room for hours and play something because my wife would have killed me in my sleep properly. Yeah. So uh, being able to, you know, when the wife is getting ready or the kids are snacking or something or doing something else, Oh, you got five minutes? Oh, I can knock out two dungeons, get my energy bar down so it can replenish while I'm waiting. And I actually found it very convenient. And even though it was different, I found it refreshing because I've been in these gotcha games before where you got to spend hours grinding on them to do whatever that you're supposed to do. And it really takes away from quality of life. And I was like really blown away at how much I actually enjoy the shorter, quick burst of games there with GOG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at first I was, I was a bit uh, confused as well because I thought it was going to be longer dungeons, but I think it worked out well. Like it fits, mm-hmm. you know, the game very well. So I agree. I, I was when they said two minutes, my first reaction was, how, "Well, how do you get any momentum? How do you, you know, you, you start, you get into a dungeon, you start getting the feel for it, and it's over, you know, and then it's like when you play it. So that's why sometimes, you know, these people, like I always say, they have the beautiful mind. They know what their what their plan is. They have it all you know, spread out and, and put on a spreadsheet or whatever they have it. They have the idea. And, you know, sometimes when you're on the outside looking in, it doesn't make sense. But then when you get your hands on it, you're playing, ah, okay, now it's all pieced together and, and I get it. So, uh, yeah, are you are you running with any guilds? Do you have a guild uh, locked in? Uh, if so, uh, how has it been? Like, how has it been if you are in a guild? Uh, you know, is it active? Is it kind of quieted down a bit? Is, is things going okay? Or are you just kind of a free agent right now? I'm pretty much a free agent. I mean, I have very strong connections with, like, MTDM. I have a, uh, I do have strong connections with YGG. I know people from Loot Squad very well, like Bryson. I've collabed with them a couple of times. But I would say I'm a freelance guy right now. Mm-hmm. I don't belong to any guild. Just making content for myself. Yeah, YGG, man, they're huge. We've talked about them a couple of times. Um, yeah, they're massive, man. They're in a bunch of games. They're, and they're, you know, they're just... They're taking over, man. They're doing uh, doing a lot out there in the, yeah. in the space, for sure. They're doing a lot out there, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. YGG, man, massive. Um, now, do you... Ex- okay, now, for the guilds, uh, speaking of the guilds, for GOG, do you expect the guild aspect to be as dominant uh, in GOG as they said it would? You know, like, uh, you know, g- here's the thing. For me, when a, ga- when a game's called Guild of Guardians... That 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 aspect on the guilds, it you know that's to me that's what actually first got my attention too. It's it's a dungeon crawler. I love Diablo. I'm a big Diablo fan. Uh, it's a dungeon crawler. You know that kind of that kind of game. NFTs, love that. Play to earn, love that. And it was about guilds, and I and I love that. I love games where you got to work with like a, a group or you work together. You have like a you you know your 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 buddies, your friends, whatever it is, your 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 crew, and you got to go do things together. Do you think how important do you think guilds are going to be in this in in Guild of Guardians? Do you think it's going to be as big like, as they say? Sorry, what was that? I feel like they are planning to make it big, big because, like you said, it's called Guild of Guardians, and these guild tokens, they were you know, they were one of the main NFTs that so- they sold when the game first launched. So I do believe, I trust that the team can pull off their vision. Mm-hmm. Because at the moment, there is 
very limited information on how the guild system will work within the game, as well as what the adventure, I mean, the guild tokens will do. So it's hard for me to say. I guess it just comes down to whether we trust the team or not. Right. What do you guys think about that? I definitely, I definitely trust the team. I think they, like I said, you know, the first time I questioned every, anything was when they said the two minute dungeons. That was when I was like, you know, that doesn't make sense. And you know, I should have trusted what they, what their vision was because they proved that it made sense. It worked. And to me, I think uh, they have such good minds on the game. Such their their team is phenomenal. Um, I know they were just in uh, NFC New York. And apparently, you know, uh, people recognize them there. Like, it's it's not just like, oh, that's Guild of Guardians. Like, yo, that's Guild of Guardians, you know? And, and there's there's yeah. some weight to that name. And uh, that's important, especially in this space. That's important. So I think they have a lot of pull in the space. I think they uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, IMX, you know, I think is, uh, is is incredible. So, yeah, I think I think whatever their vision is, they're going to pull it off. And they're going to make sure it's 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 uh, it's done properly. We're involved in, in other projects. And... Any project we're in, there's it's it's such a different league. Gilded Guardians is in such a different league than any other project we're we're involved with. It's just it it's it doesn't even come close. Gilded Guardians is just the the organization, the team, everything behind it is just on a completely different level, and uh, and it blows my mind. Uh, what about you, WT? Yeah, exactly. Looking. Looking around the space, uh, not to knock anybody else's space, everybody kind of has their own flavor of doing things, but one of the things I noticed about the umbrella of IMX and everybody underneath them that is in their corner, like your Gods Unchained and your Guild of Guardians, they run it in a very corporate-like style structure. It's it's very straight to business, no, no, no unnecessary leaks, no unnecessary banter. They keep a very tight ship. And every... I'm going to say almost probably 90, I'll say about probably 99% of the things that Guild of Guardians has said, they have followed through on. There was one big one where we all know about the delay, but we understand the space and how delays happen. But besides that, almost everything they have followed through on. And recently they have taken a look again at the guild structure because they, they, they're very good listeners too. So they've listened to the community about all these concerns about guilds and everything going on. And so while they haven't put anything concrete out yet, they are re-evaluating the guild structure that they originally set out in their original white paper. So I trust them on that because they have proven time and time again that when they say something, they follow through on it. So that's my thoughts on it. Yeah. On top of that, GOG really does take care of the community. Like think about all the free stuff we've gotten. We've got, I've gotten two airdrops of GOG tokens from playing the alpha as well as from owning the founders NFTs and also I've got a couple of free avatars. So mm-hmm. I don't know that, yeah, it's amazing. They definitely like take care stuff. of the community. Yeah. The the <laughs> first the airdrop they did see I, I missed the founder. So I found out about the game. I think it was that day or the day before. I didn't know what Guild Guardians was. I don't even know how I found it. I was just scrolling through things and I saw it and I was like, oh man, I want to. And so I went to their their page to uh to see it and they were doing the uh the sale right there. I wasn't ready for it, I wasn't prepared, so I missed the founder sale. So I didn't get any of those airdrops. But I, like again, I have buddies of mine that that have, you know, and they got tons of of airdrop tokens. And it's like these are things mm-hmm. that they didn't have to do, but they did. So like you say, they do take care of their their community 100 percent Uh that's for sure. So um so what are you looking for most about Guild of Garden? What's what's the what's the aspect what's the thing about the game that, that really pulls you in the most? What are you looking forward to the most? I really did enjoy the alpha, so I would just like to really dig into the game and play it, play the actual full game. And more importantly, I want to make content right. from Guild of Guardians because as a content creator, you know, there aren't many games that I can create content about right now because most of the game they're not very fun. There's like maybe one to two games that I enjoy playing. And I think Guild of Guardians will be one of the games that I really enjoy playing. And I think it has longevity and I think it has good virality potential. Right. So I want to make educational videos. I want to make entertainment videos based around Guild of Guardians. As a content creator, I would say that is what I'm most excited about. Awesome. A game that I can actually, you know, spend time playing and making content around. Awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm in the same boat as you, you know, I, I do stream on Twitch full time. So it's like 
when the game gets released or we're allowed to stream it, um, that's something I definitely want to get out there, you know, and it's nice. And you're right. It gives you, and, and that's another thing too, is it's a, one, it's a good game Two, it's a fun game. And, uh, and you know, it gives you something to work with. It gives you that, that content mm-hmm. you can put out there, which is going to be massive. You know, uh, we know you have like an awesome TikTok. We're going to put all your links below and stuff. Uh, honestly, check them out, man. I was watching the TikToks. They're, they're awesome. Like you're, 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 you're built for this, man. Uh, you're built for the industry. You're, you're a funny guy. You know, you, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, you got to check them out. We're definitely gonna put the links uh, and all that below. Um, yeah. So we know you're an Axie, a loyal Axie Infinity player. Do you think NFT games are going to be able to solve the extraction dilemma? It's, you know, so um that's that's one of the and like i said earlier that's one of the biggest problems right now is is people have caught on they know that these games are coming out that first you know people are going to rush in uh things are going to get hot and then it's like all right we got to pull everything out and you know usually either drop tanks the game or people get stuck holding the bag or the coin whatever you know what it is there's extraction uh problems that's what you know that's what it is it's not solved yet um you know do you think uh do you think there's going to be an answer to that do you think there is an answer to that or is it just kind of like that's kind of the nature of the beast you know it's uh you know it's it where can we go with this what can we do to solve that yeah, I oh, at the moment it's pretty much it's the nature of the beast because everyone that comes into NFT gaming right now, well, not everyone, but like maybe ninety percent of the people that come into NFT gaming is because they want to make money, mm-hmm. and that's fine. But if you just play a game to make money, then eventually the token is going to crash. Like if everyone is playing just to sell, right. there's no way. Like there's no chance that token can sustain its price. So I think the mindset of the players will have to change from earning focus to entertainment focus and i think that can only happen when there are actually fun games that we enjoy playing like for example big time is a game that i really enjoy playing and i earned like 70 bucks after playing it for like 20 hours i don't care i'm not gonna sell it i'm just gonna keep it so when more games like big time guild of guardians whatever other game that comes out that people would rather play and then maybe when they do get the nft or when they do get the token instead of but they get maybe they you know reinvested in the game because they actually enjoy it, right? And want to spend more time doing it. Then I think that will solve the extraction problem. I think it just comes down to building fun games. That is exactly my my view on it. I've said this before. It's like you need a burn mechanism that it will reward you if you if you get these tokens. It's going to reward you for putting it back into the game because if everything if you're, if there's no reason to reuse their tokens or burn them or put it back in the game, then you know, people are just going to take them and run with them. And that's, that. you're right. There's, there has to be a game good enough that makes you want to take those coins, put it back in, uh, and, uh, and, uh, use them that way. I agree a hundred percent. Uh, you said big time, man. I know you mentioned big time. Um, I never, I never played, I never got, I never got one of the passes. Uh, but I have a lot of friends that did, they raved about it. Uh, what are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts? I know. Cause I, I actually bought two, uh, two spaces on the, on the, on the founder sale. So that was kind of like a, whatever. Cause, uh, then they did the, the, the gold pass and people, they were just handing them out. Like it was nothing, you know? And I was like, Oh, well, there, there was, there we go. You know what I mean? So I, I couldn't believe that, man. When I saw that my too early, Oh man, I've never heard. I've never heard of someone getting punished for being an early investor. And, uh, and, uh, my buddy's like, yeah, we got like a hundred NFTs. I'm like, Oh, that's awesome, man. You know? So, uh, Uh-oh. Oh yeah. They, they went, they went to town, man, on it. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on big time, man? Uh, what do you think about it? I love it. I love it. It's one of my favorite games right now. And I think it does have a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know about the earning potential. Right. I, I've, if I'm being honest, I feel like it's going to be, pretty low because right like i said i played for 20 hours and i earned one nft and that's where the founders pass and when the full game launches the nft drop rate is going to be even lower yeah but the thing is it's completely free to play so that's going to be great and also there's fiat onboarding you don't have to touch crypto at all so that makes the onboarding process yeah that makes the onboarding process very smooth so i Mm -hmm. think it does have a lot of potential when it comes to onboarding players but the earning potential, I'm not too sure. And as far as spaces go, there really isn't too much information on that at all. So mm. I can't comment on that. So this, the way that Big Time is doing it, to me, that's the way, that's the right way to do it. It's, uh, you know, I said, if you had onboarding, your MasterCard, whatever, it's an email, stuff like that. And uh, it's a free to play game. That is, to me, is, and you said it, you played 20 hours, you maybe made 70 bucks. So the earning side isn't the focus. The game itself looks awesome. So you're playing, it's like people play World of Warcraft 
uh, for free. You know what I mean? They uh, not even they paid twenty bucks or whatever it is a yeah. month. You know, and they enjoy the game. You get a game like Big Time. It's a free to play game. You're not paying twenty bucks a month. It's a good game. And yeah, maybe you're not going to make thousands and thousands of dollars. You might make fifty bucks a week. You know, but that's better than paying twenty bucks a month yeah. and you're still playing a good game. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like I think that's the right way as well. It's like. But people are, are playing these games, they're expecting to make a you know, retire off of it, making thousands and thousands of dollars. It's it's okay to have an earning mechanism that it's not you're not making thousands. Maybe you're making 20, 50 bucks, but you're still earning something. And that to me is fine. And I think that's a longevity. I think that that will give longevity mm-hmm. to the game, uh, personally. Yeah. Uh WT, I know you didn't play uh, big time either, but uh thoughts on the uh on, thoughts on all that, the extraction, the the play to earn side of things. Um, what are we thinking on that? Yeah, it's a big problem, and everyone's aware of it now. And I believe the the quality games out there, they they got the opportunity to see this ahead before they release and put their product fully out there. And I believe that they're making adjustments to it. I know Immutable X and their games underneath that uh, are are definitely on top of that and basically being pioneers. So they're being pioneers to all right, how do we get around this and that was their that was their uh, day one motto was just like we want this to be play and earn not play to earn, so they were ahead of the curve on it, and then they seen it happen what they probably thought was coming so that gives me a little confidence that they kind of foreseen that and you know they've had the time to hopefully come up with a good plan and whoever solves it first they will be the leader in the space and so whoever gets out there first and shows this is how you do it and if it's successful for a good amount of time and people buy into it everyone's going to be looking to them as basically the the lead pioneers innovators whatever you want to call it and yes big time i almost got in a buddy of mine named gray he's an admin for guild of guardians and big time and he was telling me about it long ago, like back in March of 2021. And I was so heavily into like the sandbox and Guild of Guardians. I was like, there's so many lanes that you can pick that I, I chose not to go down that one. And I kind of regret it because I've heard nothing but good things about it. And it does look cool. And uh, I, I'm not a big fan of chasing when things are at the top. So if I see it dip down way in price, I might pick up a pass or I'll probably just wait for the free to play and then try it out then. So that's where I'm at at big time and uh, my thoughts on the other stuff too. I mean, the alpha is ending in like two weeks. So there's no point picking up a pass now. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The game gets released soon, right? Uh, I mean, they said it's supposed to be by the end of 2022. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, hopefully it happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You never know. You know I mean, that goes. there's delays. There's this, and yeah, I like I like the WTI you said, you know, there's that's the thing too. It's like there's games that came in first, you know, Axie Infinity was the big one, right? And there's advantages. I feel like there's advantages and disadvantages. When you come in first like that, you know, people kind of rush in and, and you know they they blew up. But the disadvantage is you don't have anybody to learn from. You're kind of figuring it out as you go. You're kind of setting the bar. And then there's games like Gilded Guardians that are coming in after. And they're like, okay, we see what Axie... Maybe they're not even looking at Axie, but I'm just saying, you know, they're like, okay, we see what works, we see what doesn't work. And you kind of have that advantage where you see other people's game plans and you can kind of tweak things. Maybe they have no interest in following any game plan, but you see what didn't work and what does work and you can kind of go from there. So um, I'm super bullish on Gilded Guardians. I think everything, you know, I, we, we believe in it big time obviously and uh, and stuff like that so i want to talk about your tiktoks a little bit man uh like i say they're, they're absolutely hilarious i was watching some you got me laughing man i, I love it man you got a good good sense well, of humor well. good vibe you know you're, you're a good looking guy you're big i'm big right. in the gut here you know what i mean you got it man you got what it takes man so uh yeah do you get any where do you get inspiration from you just kind of just come on the top of your head just kind of do your thing uh you know break us through the process man because i mean they're, they're awesome they're funny i was just checking them out man they're funny so when it comes to making tiktoks i guess you got to make sure that you understand the Web3 culture very well, because that is the audience that I'm appealing to. And whenever I want to make TikToks, I just literally just scroll. And then if I see a funny video, sometimes I'll just adjust the caption a little bit to suit the to suit the Web3 audience. And sometimes I'll just come up with a brand new idea about myself. It just comes to my head. If I make like, I make like five TikToks a day now, and I can't come up with five oh. ideas, you know? <laughs> So half of them are my original ideas and half of them is inspired by someone else. Right. And uh, if okay. you want to make great, yeah, if you want to make great TikToks, it's all about spending time in the app and learning 
Right. What works and what doesn't. One hundred percent. What works, what doesn't. You know <laughs> what, what the trends are because that's you know there's always little waves, right? You see this, you know it's the wave, and then you know yeah, you got to follow the wave for sure. Uh, no, they're funny, man. They're they're hilarious for sure. I I love it, man. Uh, I hope uh, I hope we get to you know maybe play some games, man. What games do you play? Yeah. You're a gamer, right? What games do you play? Know. At the moment, I'm spending time on Big Time. Uh, Eve IO is another game that I've been playing. Undead Blocks. I'm looking forward to that too. Is that that's the zombie shooter one, right? Undead Blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I got to look into that one a little bit more, man. I definitely got. When is, is that releasing soon or anything? Or three months. I think it's okay. the first one coming out. So I got to look Looks into that. Very interesting. Looks yeah. Very interesting. I've seen. I've seen a lot about that one. Yeah. yeah I got, I'm gonna look into that one a little. What else you got going on? Yeah. Um, you know MMOs. What kind of? What's your? What's your main game? Shooters. What's your? What's your style? Shooters and MMOs. But right now, I feel like I'm going through an MMO phase. Like the other day, all of a sudden, I got World of Warcraft cravings. But <laughs> ooh, I, I don't know why. I just, <laughs> I just really want to play World of Warcraft. I never did it because I don't want to pay twenty bucks. But <laughs> yeah, I'm an MMO guy. Dude, I played MMOs cool. for years and years and years, man. And uh, and now when a new MMO comes out, you know the buddy's like, "Yo, you got to get this." And I know, I know that can I'm opening. If I install that game, I know the can I'm opening, man. It's like it's just yeah. it'll drag you in, it'll pull you in, yeah. and there's no escaping. So I try. I love I MMOs, man, but I try to avoid them because I know it's gonna change my life drastically. You know, and it's just like yeah. it takes over, man. I, I, you know, so I don't know if I'm ready for that again, man. Because I finally <laughs> cut, the, you know, cut the cord. I'm out of here. And then it's like, no, 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 come back, baby, come back. So uh, it's tough. But yeah, man, honestly, you're a great, uh, great time, great chat, man. I mean, uh, you're you're doing awesome, and you're killing the space. Uh, you know, congratulations on that. I wish you all the best. Uh, seems like you know he's a great guy. I want to take all your socials. I want to put them below. Is there anything you want to say? Like anything at all, man? Like you have the floor. You want to plug anything you're working on? Just go for it, man. You say what you got to say. The floor is yours. Go for it, man. I guess I'm working very hard on my YouTube right now, spending hours editing and planning and scripting my videos i would really appreciate it if you followed me on there and make sure you follow these guys too they're awesome people appreciate in the web3 gaming space so support them appreciate that and same goes for for our friend here professor check them out guys uh you know in this space we're all here to help each other you know there that's just the way this is man and and uh and uh, that's you know you grow together you help each other i always i always believed in that uh dude you're awesome i really appreciate you coming down and sitting down here and stuff uh, i'll make sure to get all your links we'll put them below i'm gonna check you out i'm gonna follow all your links man uh awesome 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 guy you're gonna make it in the space uh you know you got that you got that x factor man you got it so uh thank you again for coming on here um WT, is there anything you want to say uh, closing up? Thanks a lot for coming on, obviously. Uh, I, I knew there's something about you. I always appreciate comedy, and I think a lot of other people do, even if they don't realize it. And you bring that to this space. I dabble a bit in comedy myself. Mine are way too long. I've got I've got to do better on my TikToks. I just got a TikTok finally. I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. Hi. I'm not a boomer. Uh, I'm a Gen Xer. But, like, I'm terrible at my length on tiktok i it's supposed to be quick and short i'm yeah. way too long so i gotta work on that bruno makes fun of me <laughs> about it all the time but I'll, I'll get there one day but i appreciate your comedy and all you do for the space and i like your uh your attitude and i like surrounding myself with people that aren't giving up in this and even in a bear market we're gonna keep plugging on and creating and just promoting the space as best as we can so uh hats off to you and thanks brother yeah, yeah thank man. you for, thank you guys for bringing me on hey and bear it's slow right now, but if we if we stick through it, it's gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna be really good for us in the years to come. So completely, completely agree. Amen. Honestly, thanks again for coming on. You're absolutely incredible. Uh, don't be a stranger. Hit me up anytime. Hit us up anytime you want to chat. I mean. You're awesome, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, all right, guys, that is it for today. Uh, make sure you check him out. We're gonna put all his socials below. Uh, you know, do yourself a favor. Don't do anybody. Do yourself a favor, man. This guy's awesome. Great content out there, and that's what we need in the space, man. Is the good content creators that that do this, and, and you got this, man. So, uh, thank you guys for for listening. Don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, follow the channel. Follow all the channels, and uh, let us know what you think. Let us know in the comments below. All right, we're out of here, guys. I appreciate you. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.